Aviva Showbar Blackpool, 25th of May, and Joe Longthorne arrives for a very special show. It's just four days since the announcement that Joe is suffering from throat cancer. Many of his loyal fans are here to support him. And in Joe's own words, here we go again. But with the grit and determination he always shows, the show must go on. I'm Paul Smith, and over the next few weeks, Joe's agreed for me to spend time with him as we film some special moments. As he calls it, Joe Longthorne, in his own words. Obviously, well, I was with him the other night and uh, it was great and he's very strong, I told him he's very strong and he's well liked and he has this will and he has this go and he'll fly through it. He, he has faith as well, he's good faith. Yeah. Yeah. You've obviously been with him through the other incident yes, that he yeah. had a few years back, so, but he approached that really well. Oh, he is, he, he, he just, he's a, you know, he's a, how can I put it? Whatever they throw at him, he'll go through it and he'll sail through it. Tommy's not with me, he's working. How lucky is he? I just want to say, I know you're going in, but my thoughts and prayers are with you, mate. You're strong and you'll get through this. I'll see you after for a good drink. Keep strong, Joe. See you later, buddy. Tell that, mate. Absolutely devastated for him, you know, um, especially, you know, being a vocalist and a, and a brilliant one at that and his battle cancer before and now to have it on his, you know, on his throat. Um, oh, I've cried buckets, so I have, but um, I won't cry when he sees me tonight. But um, yeah, I, I, um, I, he's a fighter though. I know he, you know, he fight the, the whole way through and, you know, he'd probably need some rest after his operation and everything and recovery and he'd be back bigger and bigger than ever but um, I just hope everybody puts their prayers together for him you know and um, you know that he pulls through and and um, and carries on doing what he does best
what a great turnout with all the fans tonight and I knew that because a lot of these fans came to my concert last week in London and I knew they were all going to be here tonight and so this is a great sort of um, it's like a come on Joe this is your you're doing your concert just before you get your up and I think that's why it's a great turnout you know the love and affection is is fantastic for him and he deserves it because you know he's got a great loyal following and um, and he, he he's he loves them all you know he makes time for all the fans Thanks, we wish him well Hiya Joe, it's Ricky Tomlinson here. I'm sitting in these familiar surroundings. You know them well. I'm of course in our little club, The Green Room in Liverpool. And when I'd done the forward to your book, to your biography, I put in it then. There's good stuff in little parcels. God knows you've been through plenty. And God knows you've pulled through every time. Because people love you, Joe. There's loads and loads of love out there for you. I've seen people here with tears in their eyes saying, why does it always happen to him? I don't know, Joe. I don't know why it always happens to you, but I tell you what, kid. You come through every time. You come through better, stronger, singing better. We can't wait to have you back. And I'm going to break a rule here, Joe. Next time you appear here on the green room stage with Stretch in the orchestra, I'm going to buy you a drink. Now, that's a first, Joe, isn't it? That's worth getting better for, isn't it? It will be the one and only artist I've ever bought a drink for. No, seriously, Joe, I'm looking forward to seeing you. In fact, I don't know when you're on here next, because we're not sure when your schedule starts again. But I might just pop up with Richard and Simon. Uh, come up to Blackpool, have a little drink with you there, just to see that you're doing OK. But um, we miss you, Joe. We miss your singing, we miss your music, we miss you. But we send you tons and tons and tons of love. God bless you. you never well, Viva was fantastic the other night. Today, though, uh, we're spending the day with Joe in Blackpool. It's his birthday and we're filming with him, so I'm really looking forward to it. I've got an hour to get there. Well, hello there, my, it's been a long, long time How am I doing? So, here we are. I guess well, I'm doing fine. Hi, Joe, how are you? Hi, Paul. Good to see you. Are you all right, love? Yes, I'm so happy to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Joe. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. You look brilliant. Thank you. You look fine. Oh, are you all right? I'm nice to see you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just done for what for what? I've lost I've lost its lead. Oh right. Collar lead, what the for the dog. Oh, um I can I can go uh I can go and quickly get you one from Bispam if you want. Oh no, that's all right. Are you right. sure, Joe? Yeah, I'm fine. Anything I'll carry it across you? the road. Ah oh, yeah. Oh you yes, thank you. She looks like it though. How you doing? I'm a moment. Ah yeah. How you doing? Yeah, good, I think you're great. Well. Thank well, you. Oh, sorry, Feel good, you know. Yeah, well, okay. H how are you feeling, Joe? Good. Happy. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, you'll keep wait, you know. Yeah. Just nice and nice. So I'm going to take the dog for it. As I say, I've got no lead. I have to carry it, won't I? Enjoy your walk anyway, well, man. If you want a brew, just let Thank us know you. if you want anything. <laughs> That's what we like, isn't it? <laughs> the Wildy family. See you later, See Joe. You later. See you Bye. Bye. Hiya Joe, a little message just wishing you all the best from everybody in Belfast. Half of Belfast is praying for you to get well soon. My brother Chris. Mary's sister, Geraldine and Anne. So get well soon, Joe. Come back to the stage where you belong. We love you. Lots of love. <laughs> this uh, is Joe Wiley's family. They're, they're beautiful as that. Uh, and this is my family. They're a uh, wonderful Irish family. And Joe's a great singer with the band, you know, and everything. That's the house we used to have there, look, before when we first moved to Blackpool. Did we, Kenny? We're going to have to walk here. You know what the point? Come on, then. Thank you. 
cried the day the circus came to town. But she didn't mind the rays just passing by her. She painted on a smile and took off her song. She danced without her mitts on the world. That's the house there, Joe, is it? Yeah. That was Pat Mantini's house, yeah. And uh, what a guy. Just said, look, stay in it. Till you get yourself right. Yeah. She bought the house and never slept in it once. Oh, she did one night. We mean Fulfo. You know Fulfo from Manchester? Yeah. Three men impersonator. Fulf. We all slept in there one night. But he was a character, Joe. Oh, well, yeah. Cancer did him well. Great character. Yeah. I don't know why I'm frightened. I know my way around here. Familiar sights, the sound here in a world to rediscover. You bring Kenny a lot down yeah, here, DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since he was a puppy, since he was a puppy, he could have been coming along here, yeah. He's great for a walk, especially on a day like this. Look at it. I mean, it just is, and uh, not overpacked on this side of the side of Blackpool. It's lovely. And, most people walk the dogs, you know, around here, but, but uh, I must admit I forgot your bag. But, uh, <laughs> in all the crowded hallway. Yeah. I don't know, when, you, when you're walking on a place like this, I'm sure anybody will tell you, you know, you can get, your head, head can be clear, you know, nice and, you know, just to sort of get yourself together. Feel the magic in making and the wonder in the music 
I suppose you have different feelings here than Hull. Yeah, well, I do. I mean, my, to be honest with you, my heart's in Hull. That's where I was born and bred, you know, really. It's like a, like a sheep. But, um, of course, you, you, have to, to, you have to get away from places to, be, to become anything, I suppose, sometimes. So I've travelled quite a... You know, I've spent time in Jersey, time in Bournemouth. But Blackpool, I find that it, it's sort of like adopted me, if you know what I mean. You know, so I feel very much a part of Blackpool. They've adopted me, they've seen me through some hard times, some good times. And uh, I don't know, it's like the hustle and bustle about Blackpool, it's, it's, you don't get anywhere else. Mm. You know, I like it. And most, you know, most of my friends are here, living here. Roy Walker, for instance, the boys are here, Bobby and Tommy and Mick Miller. And, you know, all sorts of people living here now that's uh, quite good, I like it. I think no matter where you live, Blackpool's always got that feeling of the home of entertainment. Coming home to, yeah, I, I think so, yeah, it really has, it has, it's, it's just a sensational place, I love it. I mean, as I said, I started, in, in the very first place I did was a club called in Leighton, Leighton where, where I live now, and um, it was a massive, well, it's, you know, like a work men's club, and it's still going now, but it used to be huge then, and used to have accent, and it was my first, my first ever show in Blackpool, because I remember, when I was young, I got over to Blackpool, I always did the northeast of England. And maybe you know, and maybe perhaps Sheffield and somewhere around there as, as, as a 15-year-old, 16-year-old. So I never actually got to this side of Manchester till I got into me into my 20s. I didn't discover Blackpool since until I was about 20, which was great. And of course then we was, we was doing concerts at the at the wonderful Winter Gardens. You know, I, I always call it the Opera House, but it, it's the Winter Gardens. You know, it's sensation. You know, seven nights a week. I used to see, see what. Well, up to 3,000 people a, a day and a night in the show for seven nights a week. It was just a sensation, so not just I, of course, there was me and um, Little and Large. This is not the Opera House, no, this is the Strawberry Gardens in Fleetwood. <laughs> I'm sure you've been in pubs like this when you were younger. Me and Ed started in pubs like this. Anyway, Joe, listen, I hope you're feeling good, I hope you're getting better, because I want to be on that show with you, the next show. Uh, could be the Opera House if you want, I don't mind. Could be here at the Strawberry Gardens. Who cares? As long as you're still alive, that's what matters. Um, and, and that great comedian, the, sorry, magician we just lost, Richard Devere, we just lost him this year. And um, uh, it, it was a, Richard had a show, him with his pal, and uh, a great production. So it was a good big production show with dancing and everything. Went for the full thing. It was my first summer, my first real, you know, big summer season, if you like. And uh, so it was good to play there. And uh, I enjoyed it. I played there three or four years in the North Pier, which is a great place. There's always something, something to do. In, you know, if you're a bit of a singer or you're a seller or you're doing something, there's always something to do in Blackpool. It's a very comical town. Mm. It is. It's a real comic. Doesn't it's take mix, yourself too seriously. It doesn't take yourself too seriously. You know, and it's, it's got a mixture of people from all over, all over the country. You know, come here. They always come here to, to run away. You know. No, but the, it's, it's, it, there's a melting pot of people that come from all over with diff, you know doing the different different things. And the travellers were here first. I think the very first um, travelling lady was here. She used to have a tent on the beach or something. And uh, so she made the way for all the travellers to, 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 to come to Blackpool because they're all here, all the wonderful people. They're all entertainers, you know, good people. You know, you know what, they what plays the thing. And, uh, yeah. Petrolingos, you know, and the other, all of them are talented. Every one of them do something, sing or play something or sell something. So it's a great travelling community here as well. Uh, obviously they don't travel too much now, the residents now here, but uh, it's good to see them. They're the colourful part, you know, you, you have the landowners and things and people you know. I have known people on, that, on the landowners that's been waking up to like 80 odd years old. Little Johnny Gallimore, Gallimore was a famous um, from travelling people. He, everybody knows uh, Johnny Gallimore in Blackpool. He passed away last year, so we lost him. The council tried to stop him from driving because he was over 80. <laughs> you won't have any of that. <laughs> but it's really taking you, really, uh, taking you in Blackpool, hasn't it, Joe? The, well, it the has. Whole town and, and well, of course, it has. And when I was ill, you know, at um, Victoria Hospital, the, you know, the doctors and nurses, they were all good to me. And they are to everyone, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, but, but it just seemed to fall into, it fell into, this is nice. And then when I met James, of course, in 1998, that was it. You know, that was it with God's um, happy, happy, happy. Sure. For staying. 
we, we, we still get all over the places, you know. Going to Australia this year to do well. I don't know so much now, but with some fact, I'm supposed to be going doing a tour in Australia in November. And we've got to be about, hopefully we'll get back to Tenerife, Canada, and places. But we don't know at the minute, I just don't know what's going on, you know what I mean? I feel alright, but I'm not too sure what's going on. But, uh, but there again, it's not going to cancel and cancel in. I, I hate cancelling things, I hate letting people down and saying, you know, you, you, so we're looking at more of a postponement for now. So much to do If I only had time If I only had time Dreams to pursue You're a mountain It's not that, Doctor, but I've been having these pains. <laughs> look at him, 18-year-old look at him. Retriever. Kennedy. It's still it's brilliant, isn't it? Really, yeah. Who's hurrying by through the hours that fly? Tell you what, Joe, you think you'd be in Spain today with this weather? Yeah, well, you would really, wouldn't you? It's beautiful. It's always the same wherever you are in this country, really. But we always the weather. But I love it. I love seasons. I won't move from, I won't, you know, I won't emigrate to anywhere in the world. I've been asked to a few times, you know, like Australia and places, even America. But, um, you know, this, I love the seasons properly. I love home. I like to, to be at home with the family. And it's at my time of life now. I mean, I think I'm, I'm 59 today. So, I mean, it's enough, it's enough. Come on. Where's that darling? Where's that little baby? Where are you? Straight fast. Come on darling, look at you get a Good boy. Good boy. You alright? Give a kiss. Yeah. 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 Like I say, when a ship passes, whether it's home or it's Blackpool or it's anywhere, I always, I always think, who's on that vessel? Where they're going? You know, where they're off to? And what the life's like? And can I join them? Adventure, they call it, don't they? We've done quite a few cruise ships, though, Joe. Haven't you? Yeah, I've, I've played quite. Yeah, I've, I've played. I went to Pino for quite a while. I, um, I started on a, on a three. In those days, you could go for three weeks and do like, um, I don't know, four or five shows. And you know, in the bars, the different bars, on Canberra, for instance, and then, um, and I sort of went my way up to the state room, you know. So I, 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 I used to play the pig and whistle quite a lot, you know, for the crew. Yeah. Whereas Joe's down there with the pig, because if you can sort the crew out at the bar, you know, the rest of the trip's going to be really good. So when you go on a ship, everybody, the first show to say, I'm definitely going to do pig and whistle, because it's full of everybody. And, and also, the, the lads and lasses like it, because you can take, you take the out of the, out of the, out of the you know, the captain and people like that, you see, they get to let off steam, I imagine. Yeah. So you meet the crew first, then the rest of the... So, I mean, I, I played quite a few years, like, in these different bars and sort of worked my way to the to the uh, stadium as it went. So then I never stopped, but now we're cruising. You, you, if, you, if you want to go on a ship now, you want to go on there, and I still recommend it for anyone. I think that's fine. In fact, I don't want to do that cruise show one day from Liverpool, I like it. Yeah. But um, I'd recommend it to anyone. But for an entertainer now, you go on... I once went to India, and I thought I was going for two weeks, and we landed, I did a show, and we had to get back from where it is, Bombay or somewhere, ship back. I was going back within two days, that's for me when this cruising stops. You might as well be in the bananas, whatever they call it, the bananas, whatever they call it, the Take the ribbons from your hair. Yes, yeah, so you have a lot of people, obviously with the dogs coming along here, and that's fantastic. Meeting another dog, dog um, not the owner, but look her after her. You know, they come along here, you have a nice little chat. It bring, brings people together. It, it really does. So I, I enjoy the walk. 
with Kennedy. As I said, we've been, I've been bringing him down here now since so 1980 or something, 1999 when he was a puppy. And uh, we've been coming down here every, every, all the time, unless I'm away doing a tour or something. No, it's great. Is it a great way for you to relax? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, really, I'm, I'm not a good relaxer. Really, I'm not very good at relaxing. I, I, I've, I've got to sort of keep um, keep going for some reason. I, but since I was a kid, I, I've just something about me. But uh, it's great. I love it. Come on, lay down by my side till the early morning light. All I'm asking is. So help me make it through the night. I love you as I love you for my life. Every moment spent with you. Makes me more content with you. Just as you are, you are all I would pray for, and all that you are. That's what I wake up each day for, darling. Every single touch and tingle. Now all, 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 every kiss from you to me always seems so new to me. Each one more than the one. Oh, as I love you more and more and more and some more. Every single touching tingle, don't you know? Every kiss from you to me Makes it all so beautiful me Each one warmer than the one before <laughs> well, I want to send you big, big hug and lots of get well vibes. And from me, I want to pinch your bum. So, get well soon and let's have dinner. Lots of love. Thank you. Me, um, well, folks, it might not be me, but I did see a crack in it. Good night and God bless. <laughs> We take Kenny down there quite often when we're not doing tours and things, don't we, James? Like I said, we started and, and then to do all the, you know, the top places like we played on the Pleasure Beach, Leighton Institute, North Pier, the Opera House, the Ground, which is my favourite theatre of all, because it's, it's proper, you know, the Matcham's, uh, Matcham Theatre, yeah. yeah. 
Alice and Doris Matcham. Built the Hippodrome, didn't it? I built the Hippodrome, yeah. And Swansea, they built lots of theatres, Matcham. Swansea Ground is a Matcham theatre. They built the Palladium, didn't they? The Winter Gardens, the Opera House, it's the biggest theatre in the country, Joe, isn't it? Yeah. I still, well, yeah, I mean, it's not good for me to say, but we, apparently we're still the box office there. We're still the box office we did still stands in the Yeah. For, you know, for, for, well, for, a, summer season, for yeah. a summer season. You know, when shows were shows, as I say. I'm looking to being a part of it, to be honest with you. I was in Chicago once with a great, um, with a great show. It's called um, Al Anthony Superstars, they call it. It was um, in Chicago, the first time I went to America, and um, we opened up for three weeks and ended, ended up doing six months there. And there's a great mafia of them, well, they were, you know, one of the people, unions, I think, the unions and stuff, but it was a great time when I, when I was there, and then, then I drove from there after six months ago. Well, we stayed for six months, we opened for two weeks, and stayed for six months. And everybody sang, there's no, no, no mamming on the show. So we had a Michael Jackson who was, in, who was incredible, could dance. In fact, when Michael went ill, this this geezer went ill as well. He fainted. Actually, you know, but he used to really think he was him. You know, really think. And the Prince thought he was Prince, but they all could sing and dance live. So it was really good. He wasn't just a lookalike show, you know. And then now he stood like 20 minutes at the end. But the, the boss kept it going on. In fact, when I first landed, I didn't have a green card. And my manager at the time, Ron Page. Page from Maidenhead, good lad. He said, oh, we are, we are. So we got in the queue, you know, to go through passports and things, and we got stopped. This f***ing big woman with big guns on her and spray paint and everything, whatever <laughs> they have. <laughs> Honestly, a big man, man. She said, there, right, and it jumped at me and wanted about work payments, and I didn't know anything about green tickets or anything like that. But Ron was supposed to and check it all up, but we never had it. So it was like we were in the waiting room to get to come back to England around about 10. But then, fortunately, the boss, we was working for, so the, if you like, so we pulled a fast one, and, and I went to see a judge, and within two days I was there. He moved to uh, Philadelphia, so I, I hired a U-Haul and packed all my stuff in in um, in one of these containers, what they have on television, I want to call it, I mean, storage unit. storage units. It's still there, the storage unit. <laughs> Pizza, everyone. The boss. Happy birthday, any old. Many happy turns of the day. Come on, Yeah, this is the North Hi, Pier. Yo. Nice to have Joel back where he belongs. This is his. Uh, this is his pier, Joel. This theatre. Charlo. Yes, darling, I've always got to stay here. Thank you. Someone who loves you Tender like I do When I first came here 21 years ago, we had some great shows in Blackpool, and we still got some great shows in Blackpool all over the place. And one of the first people I bumped into I've never met him in my life before, and he came in his bar for a drink and went, Hello Joey, I thought, how the f*** does he know my name? Because he's a world star. Since then we've become great mates, and he's going through a tough time, but he's still working. He's one of the nicest people in the business. Not him, not him, not him! And he's just walking past, and he said, I just want to pop in and see Joey. Please welcome to Mary England Bar, Joe Longthorne, MBE! Let me tell you, this guy has been through the mill, he's going through the mill again, he's doing better for he's still performing all over the world, and it's an absolute honour. This guy has been on the Royal Variety, he's got an MBE, and 21 years ago, he walked in here and went, Hello oh, Joey, how he knew I was, I don't know, but that's the, that's the level of this guy, Joe, welcome to the Marine Club. Uh, it's good to see you all, the mothers are you, I can't stop loving you. without giving a Shirley Bassey. I don't think they'll let you. Let me give you me and the joints. But I can see you running at the stage. A real good stranger. 
the greatest variety star this country has ever produced. And it's popped in here to say hello to you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Find another look like mine. Someone who needs you like I do. I'm actually going to do some. My wonderful friend, ladies and gentlemen, Tracy Jordan. She's been, we've been singing together, you wouldn't think so. We have for years. We've, we've played albums together and everything, and, and now she's a uh, higher trace. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. And please. <laughs> now, if we may, we're going to do it anyway. But we'd like to do a tribute, ladies and gentlemen, to two wonderful stars, legends out there, darling. Complete legend. Ladies and gentlemen, Barbara Streisand and Mr. Neil Diamond. Yes, it's over. 
support and say we love you loads. We're here in the Black Bull Tower Circus right down in the dungeon. So we just want to give you a call and say how much we love you and we're really rooting for you and we know you're going for an operation soon. Even though we know you're going to be perfectly fine because you've gone through this so many times and you're one of the strongest men I've ever met. So we love you, we really want you to do well and we wish you all the best and we, as we said, love you to bits. Absolutely. See you later, young Joe. See you later, sir. See you soon. Albert. It's Albert. Albert. I love you, Albert. I love you, I love you. I spent half my life running around the world in search of you. You're the echo of a dream, reflections in a stream, fantasy <laughs> that will never come to my perfect lady blue. <laughs> We've just been to see the clairvoyant, but there's a notice outside that says Clo closed due to unforeseen circumstances, but we're still going to grab her when she comes out. <laughs> Marvellous people. That's me singing. Yeah, well, now we're on the glorious North Pier, where it all started with me, really. You know, you can imagine queues and queues and queues and people come and see our show, you know, me and Roy Walker and Dana and people. And I think that's where Dana lost the ring on that beach. We found it a couple of weeks later. <laughs> Hi, Joe. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say. Here we go again. Another serious illness. I don't know how. In God's name, you get over them. I remember the first time you got sick. 30 years ago. You were just about to become probably the biggest star this country's ever produced. Young man, during the summer season, you, me, Dana, my wife and kids there watching it every night. Oh, just delighted to be associated with you, you and your family. We walked the roads that night, 30 years ago. Health hasn't been good to you all along the way. But you know what, Joe? I never really once, as the words of the song, heard you complain. And that's an amazing thing to have in a human being. You go on stage and you give them your all. You give them your heart. Anyway, another big operation, another big moment for you. And uh, all your friends, everybody in show business. They all adore you. They want you to pull through and they want you to get back in your rightful place on that stage and at the top where you'll belong. Good luck, Joe. Let's go on this drum beat. I remember this when you got, first, got, first got put in. Um, Lord Delphine had it put on because it's the same walking up and down and me, me, me and my mother was on the tram with him once coming from the summer season. A great show business guy. Shall we get on it? Oh, okay. Uh, 
this is the North Pier Express. Bad and the ugly. Lovely in it proper. Beautiful. You see, you can't beat it. You can't. Proper proper entertainment. You can't beat People it. People have a nice food. That's nice. I've just bought one of them. I think so. Alright. I can't one can oh. switch the on though. <laughs> Bill, Bill. 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 You'll have that. Go on, cat. I heard you playing the other day at the piano. <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 but, but I can't handle that, you know. Go on, let's stop and carry on. Go on, right, mate. Yeah. Yeah. It's lovely. Right, if I say you, yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, can I have a nice round of applause? A very, very hard working man has worked a long time in this town, all over the country, in fact, all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Joe Hawthorne, ladies and gentlemen. Nice big round of applause. Getting um, how I do like to be myself South the Seaside. Yeah. You get a great girl there what's playing modern songs, people out here. It's lovely, it's what it should be. This is where you'll see a few changes. Right, shall we have a little look then? Yeah. I don't can't tell you how many times I've walked up and down these stairs and how many, how many times I've fell up and down as well because it's fabulous. Isn't it? So when they come, I was, I was come past here one, and there was always a television on Pete, you know. Oh. I, I, the, the man on the door used to watch the TV. I said, what are you doing there? Are you watching TV? We should be <laughs> answering the jigger. <laughs> How awful he was, but uh, bring back memories. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I mean, it's proper theatre, you know what I mean? And like I said to the lads, it's not the best stage area in the country to be That was the day we uh, we bought it. Well, I bought the pier with the family. Yeah, it's nice, look. Yeah. Lovely, yeah. You can tell us that. Was this there. was your dressing room? Yes, that was me. Number one. That was it. It was not one like this, though. This is <laughs> this is beautiful. Is what it was like. It was like a <laughs> rabbit hutch. 
<laughs> Lovely. Beautiful. Because I was a bit naughty years ago, you know, it's nice to do shows in here. Maybe I'd say, well, look, stop the night. Yeah, I believe so. Once you've got a party, you're not a party, but you? If you're in. Do it half an hour on the stage, you come off, the champagne flowing. So I did the half thing. I'm very so not as nice as this, but I put curtains up. Uh, all sorts, of, uh, a bar and then a couch. You never got off the couch. So for six weeks of that summer season, 18 weeks it was. 18 weeks. For six weeks, yeah. I used to sleep on the pier. And then they sent the heavies down for me. <laughs> You've got to get off in the middle of a storm. We've no insurance for you. <laughs> I had a milkman coming down, my dress was number one back pole that I used to put. <laughs> no, it's great. It looks fantastic, Peter. People can see for themselves. Yeah. Everything. To come here now and, and perform must be a, a glory for it, any, any artist, whoever you are. To get in and look at this. Because a lot of it helps to have your surroundings nice, you know what I mean? And when it's proper done. You can sell, tell us a lady's touch here as well, can't you? Well, Dickinson's did. My daughter. Five, 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 daughter, five thousand my pounds. My designed it did all. There you are, yeah. see. The television, that tells you all what's going on in the theatre. So you don't have to move or be told. You can watch it in here, what's happening when the next turn's on. So we've had all that uh, piped in. It's just, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's as it should be. This is, Congratulations. This is another one. Right. We used to do this one as well, Austin. Did you? Now and again. The view, I mean, look at that view. Uh, that's why I wouldn't you move. Wouldn't, you wouldn't get in a hotel like this. This is why I wouldn't move. This one was the span. I had the pad there. I said, I can't, we're not, I can't move from here. So I was here six weeks. <laughs> Milkman. Post. Like Peter said, where in the world? It's often studio and say, Peter, you know. Yeah. I mean, look out there. Where else are we going to be in the world? Yeah. Even when it's, even when the weather can be, you know, shall we say, less People like, clement. Look at the ship looking over the edge here. Look at that. I often thought that we'd come up here. Always, look at that view. Beautiful. And on a clear day, you can see the other man. Right? You really can. Wow. I knocked it completely down, every wall oh, in the yeah. place. And we rebuilt it. That was um, nice, I still kept the character as well. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, so look, at James has got his tent into a week. You could, how much would you get a, a week for this? <laughs> look, it's a, it's a penthouse that's up here. Well, you get a, when you come to the opera, you don't get a change in dressing rooms, you, you change in the penthouse. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like a, it's like a New York apartment. Johnny Casson, when we did it, that was his favourite, that is. That number four? Johnny Casson's favourite. That was Johnny Casson's um, uh, thingy. Yeah. I once come on here, Johnny used to like a drink as well, when, when he got his little rucksack on, about was and Evans Eye, and it, it was like I went to sleep up like that, didn't you, James? With the rucksack on it? No, I, four in the morning, look, he's still out with the rucksack on his back, first in the fog. <laughs> Are you there, Johnny? I'm all right, I'm all right, you say I'm all right. He stayed all night, stood that guy, got straight me there like that. All night. Joel Anthorn, dear, dear friend. I'd love to comment on him, but how could I stoop so high? Wonderful fellow, Joe. We've been with him through his illness. I was working with him at the Opera House when he was technical the first time. And I watched that boy graft and graft and graft, and in the end, he had to go in for the op. He's a tough old boat, is Joe. Tough old boat and a darling of a man. Most wonderful human being. I've ever met. I love him. Britain's favourite view. Look at this. Uh, Pete here. I mean, my brother Pete. Yeah. He, has, he, he, has, he owns all the other ads as well on every pier. So he's got it covered. When he wants to come out and check what's going on, a funny bump, anybody bounces to eye. It's fantastic. <laughs> but look at the view. Trying to keep the character. Yeah. And that's the why I fetched the organist back. I wanted it to Well, that's back. a good move. Because we've got all the modern stuff on the other piers, all the rides, and I didn't want that down here. I wanted it for people that wanted a different type of an old show. Only a showman can do this. Delphine was a showman as well, I love Delphine. Only a showman can make it this magic work.
Say end of pier and all the carry like that. How is this an end of the pier? Everybody from everybody's played here, and to walk down this wonderful stage, look at you, what you can feel as it slopes, it slopes just nicely as they're supposed to do. Just slopes a little bit. We're in Scarborough. It's like going down an hill. <laughs> it is. But, but this is. Look at this. James, look at this. Give me a thrill. Thrills. Hey? Just give me a little thrills and stuff. <laughs> It's not a bad sight either. When these places are put together, it's the walking on the city feet. So everything, everything's built for a purpose. And you, Bosch, I defy any artist of any what, what, what's got a bit about them, couldn't come out here and give a proper going on. You feel good. In my sleeping cold, there in my shadow. You've been content to let me shine, yes you have. You always want to stay behind. I was the one with all the glory. You were the one with all the Imagine how many hundreds of thousands of people have been sitting in these chairs over the years. Fantastic. He has a life on his own. Yeah. You ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I the young lady, your share. I'll get to him in a minute. Tessie, your share, of course. Des? 
Uh, the great Tommy Cooper. Fire! I used to uh, <laughs> Sorry. I used to go out with him when, we, when he was on the top of the north in Manchester with Joe Fuller. Ruby Murray? Ruby Murray. Yes, Ruby Murray, yeah. Did you know her, Joe? I didn't, but she was everyone's favourite mm. singer, wasn't she? Yeah. And the young lad at the top, who's that? Me, that was me when I was... Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you've included me. In the Where Are The Now section. If a picture paints a thousand words Then why can't I paint you? The words will never show What do you think of the hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people that's been on this pier at performances? Some great shows, Russ Abbott Bobby and Tommy, George Formby, Mary Reed, Max Feinwein, <laughs> I don't know the lot, Frankie Vaughan, and another legend. You know, they have some great shows, they still do now, but um, yeah, great to be in Blackpool on a day like this. Show, this is, this is Mark. Are you alright? I mean, he's one of the family, proper people. Look at this. How many years have been here now, Mark? How many years have you been here now? How many years? 30 years. 30 years I've been here. Best all my family up on here. Isn't it lovely though? Yeah. Imagine it. You can have anybody in the world here, yeah? every single person. We haven't got Sissy Flinch. Lovely, eh? Look at that, you're next to Lowell and Hardy. <laughs> Hiya, Joe. I hope you're okay. I know you're going into the hospital, but don't worry about it because you're a strong man and you'll be all right. And you've got to get back on this pier, get yourself fit, because everybody's missing you. It's not just your talent, it's you're just so nice to everybody. You know, you'll stop, you'll talk to anybody, and there's not many people like that. But get yourself well, and we'll have some good times again like we used to. Love it, love it. Oh, but it's better to my best mate. Yeah. God bless you. Have a good night you. tonight. Thank you, sir. Enjoy yourself. And we're looking for next year, tell them. Yeah, yeah we'll sort of God spares us. We'll be here next year, that's it. Yeah.
God bless you, Peter. Yeah. Love yeah. to see you. Bye yeah. bye. See you. Lovely to see you, Joe. Thank you, my love. Hey, John. I'd like to have I need your help here because I sometimes forget the words of this, but I know the voice. A great singer, great voice, voice, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matt. Mm -hmm. oh. Walk away, please, girl. For it's your life away. A life that I know. Share for just a day. We should have met some years ago. For your sake, I say, walk away. Please go, walk away and go. Life that's full of no regrets. Don't look back at me. Try to forget. Why build a dream that cannot come? Don't look back at me Just try to go on Why build a dream That cannot come true So be strong Reach the sky Walk away Walk on La 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 Walk away. Hi, my name is Lotti Anders. I'm the producer of the Blackpool Tower Circus. I'm a friend of Joe. I'm his brother, actually. And I wanted to get quickly, quickly better and come to join us back in the show business. You are part of Blackpool. You actually one of the six legs of the tower. Come back as quick as you can and get well. We love you, Joe. Can you hear the other little bus at Blackpool? Yeah, they can. Any lovely? Is that a bit loud, you know? Well, that was nice to have a walk down that pier, wasn't it? Yeah. It brought back memories, didn't it? It brings a lot of memories about it. <laughs> Peter didn't know that Sage is supposed to slam. He didn't know that. No, until he spotted it out. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he didn't yeah. really know that. That's yeah. what they did with that stuff. I think he just got to watch it out. Albert did. No speech detected. What? <laughs> Went through where? Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? He talks to me. <laughs> okay, my side. Well, I don't know where anybody's coming. Well, there you go now. Nephew, me, yeah. I want. Yeah, go on. Keep going. On there. Yeah. On here. Yeah, keep going. On here. Yes. <laughs> Left here now. I'll be careful, look. I think I'll tell you, we finished the party at one o'clock in the morning on the pier. And we, the, the driver drove us down the tracks. It's two miles. Can you, what, can you imagine? It's dangerous, yeah. Peter Sage was, he's a traveller. He puts his money where his mouth is. You know, he clearly does. And not a lot of people do that in this climate today now, of course, but um, he's done it. And he's a sh born showman anyway. The cat were doing it. My family called Corrigans they used to have Battle Variety Club years ago, okay? They were the same sort of people, you know. And it's nice to, to all the peer offers together. It's good, isn't it, Jim? It's good, there's an atmosphere. <laughs> Well, I'd love to go back and get you and do a month or something, James. Yeah, I reckon it'll be six weeks. Nice, right? 
You really hear us first, folks. Come on now, you don't have to worry because I'm coming, baby. Back to where I always meant to stay. Hello, darling. Now I know the meaning of your story. I got so much love inside me anyway. This is a song I sang years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Thank God I'm still singing it. It's one of my favourite songs. I know it's quite some of your favourites, and it, it goes like it's nice and easy. Nothing's quite as pretty as Mary in the morning When through a sleepy haze I see her lying there Soft as the rain Pulls on summer flowers and warm As the sunlight shining on her golden hair Oh, and when I awake, I see her lying close beside me. I want to take her in my arms, deep as her. Nothing's quite as pretty as Bellingham in the evening and all, all of my tomorrows for a lifetime we will share. And when she turns to touch me, I kiss her face so softly, and my memory is there to love. Another day Joe Longfellow, at the present moment, is probably the best British male vocalist in this country. Monster, monster fact. Monster fact. So it's a great joy to be involved with somebody who I've loved and admired, talent, he's talent-wise, for 30, 40 odd years now. I've got monster confidence he'll be back much sooner than later. And actually what I've said also, one of my quotes in, in the, one of the national newspapers about Joe was, if it, God forbid, God forbid, He's Mr. Showbiz. Even if he comes back and does juggling or magic tricks, you can't keep that boy off stage. David Halford will be very pleased about that because he's got all the dates in the book. But that's true. The guy is, is showbiz through and through. 
I've been, I've been involved with Joe for about oh, probably 10, 12, maybe even longer, 14 years uh, doing the tour promotion for Joe all over the UK, some stuff in Europe. Um, a phenomenal talent, without a doubt, phenomenal talent. We hope that everything goes, goes swimmingly well and I'm sure Joe being a fighter will, will come back stronger than ever. He'll come back, we've moved all the dates to the, the, the back end of 2014 into 2015. Um, uh, and I think that's a, a kind of therapy for Joe, you know, to know that he's got this to look forward to. And that's part of his recovery, is to look forward to this because he just loves performing. But I, I'm sure Joe will come back stronger and fitter than ever. And um, get well soon, Joe. Welcome to my world. Won't you come on? You see? Oh wow, it's very smart. It's very smart. Isn't it? So we can travel around in here, pull up anywhere we need to pull up, and it, it, it fits anywhere. It's a lovely piece of equipment. Auto trail. I mean, I, 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 I'm not, I'm, I'm not, why is that? What, come here, man. You look like an old gypsy. You're coming to tell some fortune. Hello. It's funny, fat Bob. Fat Bob will go. If I tell you the truth, won't they tell me? If I tell you the truth, I won't they tell you. We've been down there seeing them all. Oh, yeah. yeah you do not look well. I feel good. You look about 30. Oh, no, you know. I don't know why that's going like that. But Sonia, you know, there's room for everyone, but it's just James and I, that's all really, basically, and the Kennedy. And, uh, Everything anybody would want. It's, it, it, uh, James bought me this for Christmas, really. But we, we planned so much of a tour. The thing is, now now we've got the, the wonderful thing, and we find ourselves in a position where perhaps we won't be using it because I may have to have some time off. So here we go again. Yeah, no, you know things, but um, but this has been a godsend because I did the last tour in this, and uh, it helped us so much. And to do that, anyway, it's a, it's a lovely. I'm the channel, I can't stand that man anymore. Have you seen it? Well, it's everything you want. Look, nice lovely fridge. The beer in the bottom. And you look at me, I'm a dad. I love coaches, I like coaches. Have you have a, a bar? In case any dignitaries come on, you know. Which you, which, you, which you can't get in a hotel, really. You know, not, that we'll, not that we want to sit and drink all night and all night there. Yeah, it's just that, you know, you might meet people on the way and come on and come in. Shower you and it's... I mean, I'm used to this because, as I say, I come off travelling, people say, I'm used to travelling, you know, we've done it for years. But but staying in hotels, it really started to drive me mad. So we got this. It's lovely. Um, but shall we show you the garden? Why not? Why not? Come on, man. As you can see, it's a it's a very family home. Oh, yeah, it's a lovely place. It feels very, very nice. We, we, as I say, we came came from uh, from Blackpool. Uh, from where they call it um, Maidenhead. Lovely place, of course. But I went had a bit of problem. You know, I worked so much, but. 
uh, power of attorney had a lot to do with things and uh, anyway it went so so he came to Blackpool why not and um, we moved into a friend of ours Pat Mancini MBE and most people know Pat in Blackpool and Manchester and she was a great and Rudy her husband of course they were great people and so Pat let me have the house it was good and then from there we went obviously house looking or flat looking and we came here and there was an auction going on for the contents of the house and James my partner's na nana his granny I call her she do does house clearing and things and she's 80 odd and she 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 said to James and I there's an house coming up on, on the market go and have a look at it and when you come off the street and you come in here look it's beautiful so we went straight for it come and I'll show you down here it's been a wonderful home but we've got to take things serious and look at uh, what we're going to do with when I go if I go if he goes what we do we go. we're going to set a trust up so the house remains uh, a, a trust charity so that you know oh they are I don't know but I'm looking for like um, people with learning difficulties and things like that or need accommodation for when they go to hospital and things so we're going to work it out and, and the house will go to a trust so that uh, it's just a nice way of doing things in it mm. you know what I mean so that's that's on the cards and we're looking forward to doing that we're looking too forward to it but you know what else can you do it's lovely yeah, it goes right back here. It's, it's, it's quite large, I didn't think really. So I said to Jim, let's go and have a look. It's wet in the house. And we said, right, we didn't have a shilling, but we said, well, I will have it. And we said, that myself. So we had it, and man we managed to get it. And um, it's a wonderful home. We love it. This is where I keep the hens. There they are, look. 19 weeks old, these hens. And my brother plays a big part in looking after this house as well because our kid lives in here with his wife. In fact, he's just recovering from throat cancer himself. Our John, he's just hit, got it bad. And he's, uh, you know, he's, he's getting clear now. And his sister has CLL, which, which, which I have. My sister Elizabeth, to call her. And she's just pulling round now. She's having it really tough with treatment and steroids and she's just coming round. So you've got, my sister got exactly the same disease as I have. And my brother got the throat cancer. And it's a funny old thing, isn't it? <laughs> it was odd because when we went for our test to see if there'd be any bone marrow match to me, all, we all, all the family came down, you imagine all the family, everyone came, we came from India, everybody were, and my brothers and sisters were, and there was one match between us. Isn't it odd that? Amazing, that. And you try and get a match. Yeah. So I said, right, you better go, there's not, you know, you'll you get no match from you, so you've gone. There's a wonderful house next door, which is <laughs> a, 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 a senior citizen's home. And it's lovely, nice next day, I get no problem. We have a little, you know, a bit of a do and that, nice people. But uh, you can see, it's, it's nice, it's like being in a bit of a jungle, come to here. Apple trees, what, who could want for any more in the world than the life? Don't start laughing, Paul, I'm just saying, who could want? <laughs> it's beautiful. So we have a gentle wave there to the people now again, because all, all the trees here were, were actually covering all the light. And I did notice, for, would you believe, for years and years, that I thought, now these people, these people in there, the lights come back into them. So we chopped half the trees down so that they can, you know, because I know what it's like, it's like being in a cell. Well, not so much so, if you're, in a, if you're in a bed and you're being treated and, and it's all dark all the time, it does, it, it's no good. So the trees are down. Sometimes the the old years sunbathe on the roof. No, they're nice people. What it's about the outside loo, Joe? Oh, well, that, that look away brought me. So I brought you something. You put your plants in. I said, no, bring something back. What's Victorian? Look what you brought back. Yeah. What can I put in there? <laughs> but, uh, I'm, I'm lucky. I've got a very talented brother with guys building, and um, a good guy. Uh, you know, Gene Parks, her uh, son. Tragic, she lost her son last year, I remember. And um, and her other son, Gavin, we met uh, last year and we got talking and he was a bit down and I was a bit down. And I found out he could do a bit of this, that and this. So now he, he works as a friend, you know, he comes along and helps me. And he's done most of this chopping down. I mean, we haven't seen the plants yet because they're not ready to come out. Hi, 
I've known Joe since 1985. He's a great guy, always friendly to everybody. He's more like a brother to me than my own brothers are. I know he's a fighter, so I'm, I'm not worrying too much about him going into hospital this time round. But he will fight. Joe, fight the cancer, get rid of it for good. Get on stage again. Can't wait. Love you, Joe. Bye. You're really close to your brother, Joe. Yes, we are. Every t I moved to Jersey, he moved to Jersey. I moved to Bournemouth, he moved to Bournemouth. I moved to Maidenhead, he moved... Because don't forget, when I'm doing lots of tours, in those days I was, I was doing like lots of tours, so members of the family, look at, look, I'd be away as much as look four months away from the house. And then, so I mean, so rather than anyone else, obviously my brother would go in there and, 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 and keep looking after the house. It was quite a big place and everything, you know, so he'd look after that. So it's good I've had a, a travelling... Um, a family with me all the time. There's always something to help out. And I like to say, you know, your family's the best people really to watch over what you do. And he does, he does a lot, a lot all the way, a lot of stuff. I mean, there is a little bit of noise, um, you know, traffic noise and that, but f f the fact is, we're in, we, you, could, you, you could throw a ball from here and hit the Blackpool Tower. So it, it, it's within, it's like a, a townhouse, if you like. Jim said, put this Christmas tree in, it'll, it, you know, we, we're one that lives. And plant it, look what it's gone like, what they call it. Is that dead or alive? It's it's it? So what they call it, they told us at Dobby's, is it? they said, oh, I'll leave you for winter pot. <laughs> so we had it there to see if it rebound. It looks like it's, it, it looks like it's had chemotherapy itself, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah. Look at that. <clears throat> you know, but uh, it stays there, it's all right. When all these flowers come out, I've got wonderful um, fruit there. With, um, we used to call them goose gobs. Gooseberries and strawberries and all sorts of berries and apple trees, it's lovely. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm up here, you know, mansions are all right and all that sort of stuff. And when you're younger, you know, when, you, when, it, when I first do TV, the first thing anybody do is say is, look, coming from where I come from, look, nothing. Uh, so he said, we'll, we'll have to have a nice house. So I went, we did what a lot of people do, that's it. So we bought a millionaire's beautiful place. But um, when I moved in, I knew in the back of my mind I'd be probably moving out. You know, and so I had a bit, had a bit of luck with illness, which, which maybe I had time off, because when, when an artist has to, or anyone has to have time off, because of surgeries and recouping and things, it can really dig into, I mean, we went down again to penniless again. It just it soon rounds up. And so I went, uh, this is lovely here, I can recoup here. I've got cabbages under there. Get mine in you die be when you get a plant lab, a plant lab, a great thing, we'll have a cranky bit shit and crash station up the ground with a toothpaste. Can't actually clean your teeth. It's great. When well, the rhubarb comes out, have you seen that? Monty Bond. Monty. <laughs> all the rhubarb comes out, it comes in a jolly sort of blue tack, where it comes out of sprouts all over. Just look after your rhubarb. I bet so you don't bend down too much. Well, it's great, as you can see. She was on that wonderful program, Chelsea Flower Show, the other day. They all are. Yeah. And she's all dressed. I forget her name now. She's gorgeous. But when she's doing it, she's around it all that. And when I do do it, like, I pull her heads off once a week. She, 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 I forget her name now. She makes me laugh. So we did the garden accordingly. Of course, we're a month. We was a month behind, so everything died. We had to replant stuff. Well, I, I, I couldn't tell you what one plant from the next. Yeah. But there again, that's not. That, that, that's all not as necessary, is it? Because that takes time and expertise itself. So, so to have things growing everywhere, it's fine. But our kid planted one tulip. I said, we'll have some tulips down there. So put, put the bulbs. All the bulbs were in, all the tulip, all the things that come up, they're all daffodils, yeah. When they come up, there was one daffodil there, like, for instance, and one six foot over there. It was like a runway. You know, and what, hey, one daffodil, daffodil each. You know, right around the garden. But somebody said to me, they're coming clubs next year. Oh, this is wonderful. I mean, it's a lovely, it's when, when the people who had this house were people called Fieldians, they were builders, you know, in fact, I think built um, Victoria Hospital. They were builders, so they built all this area, mm. you know, this, uh, you know, so, they were, so they knew what they were doing, because the garden was very, that's the one thing I'd catch on my nerves, an air dryer on wheels. <laughs> and you think, oh, there we go, then the kids next year come again, don't they? Yeah. Oh! But you know, oh, then you get fighting buses. But overall, it's very peaceful. You know, up to, up to now, I've done perhaps, you know, from going around the world and everything, and, and getting paid to do it, and getting paid to travel and enjoy it. How lucky can that be?
I mean, look at that. Japan, Pakistan, India, China, Bradford, anywhere you want to go. Well, James, John, James is a master golfer in my partner. James, James is a real crack in golf. He, he, uh, he, when we went to Australia once, he played with a champion of Australia female in beta. Yeah. Oh no, James, he's a real serious golfer, mm. you know, he's, which is good because, you know, we get away from each other quite a bit from the day, you know, we're not, we're not you know, we're not, we, we get away from each other. James goes and um, does his golf, which is fantastic. But since he's been managing me, of course, that's like 10, 15 years now, he's, um, he's he put his golf on the back shelf, if you like. So it was very brave of him because he could have turned pro at 16 years old, he was ready to turn pro. But we often go around, you know, we're looking to go, go around, but we rent places in Tenerife, he goes, we wax them all. He really is a decent, and he's a great guy as well. He's well liked. But we're very different, we're very, it works though. Come on. The Buddha's there. I mean, I'm, 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 I love, I, I'm very tolerant, we have to be no religions, everyone to their own religion, I think it's fantastic. With the Buddha, I see a little guy over there, it reminds me of Abdul, my brother-in-law from years ago. He sits there, and he's nice, pleasant, and he's lovely. Could have gone, and then, you know, it's lovely, we're having a barbecue in a few weeks' time. If it's nice, the barbecue's about kicking off about nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, John, uh, John and, uh, and, and, and Gavin built the barbecue for me. So lucky, really, lucky, lucky to, to be here. And it's, as you can hear, I've got, in the background there, somebody singing, who is it? Is it uh, Randy Crawford. Randy Crawford singing to me over the wall. Make sure all the bears and things have got plenty to eat. It's, it's, the, only, it's the only home I've, I've belonged to, and especially being with James, that I feel comfortable, where I can feel, you know, it's all right. I'm in Blackpool, just down the road, and it's lovely. It's, and you can tell that the home's got a lovely warming effect. It's got a real nice buzz about it. All these have been planted, I don't know what's what. We all come up with different towns. Bits and pieces. It's got a bit of fly, a bit of thingy flying out there. But they're nice. It's lovely. I like to see things, you know, come together. But look at that, for instance. He's supposed to put these in bunches, whatever they are. This thing here. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it looks like, I don't know, Ken Dobden at the back, on the back. <laughs> but you don't, you're supposed to plant bunches of them, don't you? Look, there's one there, 600 yards, there's one there, one over there. Ain't it funny? <laughs> but they're, both, they're all supposed to come in big clumps, but you put them together, they come through, and they come through, they're in the light. So anyway, the brother built this for me, and Gavin. It's more like an extension than a greenhouse, isn't it? All I've done is lettuces, look. <laughs> Tomatoes and stuff. Now, there's a bit behind here that I can't show you. Can I have one quick look? Not marijuana. <laughs> I'm just cucumbers. You know, little bits when it comes out. It's just something nice to do, isn't it? You know, to, to do a little bit. And so my brother and Gavin knocked this up for me last year, so we could do exactly what's happened. In fact, to be honest with you, what with the garden and everything, if I have to have time off, and I'm not going to perhaps be doing concerts. It's lovely to be um, the gardens right now for me sitting recouping. It's as though it's all as though it's been put together for that. So I, I enjoy it. I've got tomatoes and everything. And uh, you know, the odd lettuce, but I'm not really green fingered. But uh it's just nice, it's something different. And this is our um farm. I might have to put the sound out of here. But I'll tell you a story, folks. Since I've um, I've been going up and down with this illness, to be honest, it, it, it come, creeps in. You know, one minute depression sets in, and then the next minute you're laughing your head off, and then you get a pain in your neck and think, oh, here we go. I, and I've done it all before, so I'm ready for it. But when you when you so I'm looking that way that I, I can see perhaps what's going to come up. So I have an advantage. You get you because 
you know, you know, it's an advanced system. It's not good to go through things, but going from a bone marrow transplant to, to what seems to be going wrong now, they're totally different things, but uh, I don't know. Another thing is, well, if you get these carp on that, well, I've got a few carp. Be careful, you've got to put a net over a wire. Because I was once sat here, and they're quite pricey, these fish, you know, I was sat here once. You know, I'm out of my arm, but there's a smock in a pipe. And a big thing, what do they call them, errands, come down, it grabbed the fish, and it's gobbled and flew off. Well, somebody said to me, what, Christian said, what has happened? I said, a bear just flew off with 600 quid in its gob. <laughs> No, a little way. Yeah. Imagine it go away like that. Yeah, you can sit here. And that's the figure of Our Lady in the Catholic Church in the back over there. Benedict there, looking up to Our Lady. And that statue actually came from Blackpool's um, Sacred Art, uh, I know you said theatre, church. So when I'm not madly, madly religious now, you know, I like to tolerate obviously other people's goings on and stuff. I just think it's about love. I just think it's about understanding your fellow man and stuff. There's not enough going about, you know, just, just being, you know, normally now it's nice to each other. It just seems to have gone awry. But uh, we'll see. So I sometimes sit here, there you are, look. Oh, okay, Coming up now. Look. So I love sometimes sitting out here, you know, with a you know, glass of milk or something and sit and just have a study and watch the fish. Sometimes have a little prayer, you know what I mean? Like I say, I'm not um, mad on religion, I don't think many people are, but the, but the love, the, the, the meaning of the thing has gone awry. And I just, uh, you know, pray for peace and things like that. And so I have, I have my own way, you know, dealing with it, if you can do it. I'm a Jesuit, you know. You know, try to do as Jesus Christ did. Fact. I think you'll go a long, long way, you know, I really do. So that's the way I look at it. I just love it. And you know, usually it's not we're not talking big flash millions of pound plates, it's not it's not that it's not that type. It's character. And it's lovely. It's a lovely home. And we're very proud of it, James and I. And it's uh, it was a godsend. Very lucky. Cancer is a very personal thing, but, but people who suffer more as a family, and I'm, I might be wrong for saying that, but, but you know, once drugs kick in and you know things happen, one tends to, you know, be in a haze as it were. So, so sometimes the suffering stops because it, it, it can be. And I've been I've been having cancer since 1982, I think. That's when I very first found it. It started as lymphoma, which 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 which, which uh, got me Hodgkinson's disease, and it got me early. So the fight started early. I was um, I went for a I had a stiff neck. I thought I was swallowing, I thought I'd swallowed too many Viagra pills. No, I, 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 I and I said I've got to the doctor, and then um, he said to me, "Look, we just check you out." So I went to a doctor called Doctor ba Baker or Baxter, who was in Scarborough. And within two days, I was in Leeds for um, Tony Child, who at that time was the top guy in uh, Leeds General Infirmary. And within 10 minutes, I had an operation to uh, see what it was. It was cancer. So it was a fight was started. But I, they, what, that, at that time, they didn't choose to it blast it out. They thought, well, we'll see how it goes. And it steadily got worse and worse and worse. But I had, I had done some good times. I've, I've, you know, I managed to be able to sing and stuff and do some shows and things, but it's, it gradually crept, crept up. And then it came to the CLL, it's, um, it's lymphatastic. Lymphatastic. I don't get too involved, but leukemia. And it became out to have a bone marrow transplant. And um, so I was, out, I was out, of, out of the game for a year again. And uh, that was when it got strong and, and I, and I thought that was it with the bone marrow transplant. We let land out about three or four times. But you know, even then, in the, net, in the beds are the big, there'll be children suffering. You know, you know. People call them kids. I call them children. So I was in Manchester for quite a while, and um, you know, with people suffering with the same thing. But the thing is now, 
the, the thing is now is where the, the money has to go with the charities. I think it's, it's the, the, the gene mapping. It's, it's, a, it's not a brand new thing, but I mean, it, it means um, by five or six years from as we speak, the treatment will be uh, given according to your genes, which in the long run saves billions of health service, and it just treats that individual person, like we're all individual. So the treatment can go down now to to one person, so they're not not wasting time, but not giving unnecessary um, drugs and stuff if people don't need it. With a gene mapping, they can say, leave that, get rid of it, and just give him that. And it's all individual, which is marvellous. So gene mapping's a thing now. But if you talk to anybody about that, gene mapping, I would say, they want it now, because everybody wants things now, and that's it. But I think the cure for cancer is just, just down the road, for, set for certain cancers. And I think, um, for what I hear, it's gene mapping. We'll see. And the fans have been a massive support to you, Joe. Do you know they, are, they, they have been tremendous, and, and like it's like it's like an energy with fans. I mean, I have some really close fans, which are, are close friends. In fact, quite a lot of the fans, I do know them by the names and stuff. And mm-hmm. you know, so they they've stuck by me. They've followed me to Australia, to Canada, wherever I've been. In America, when I was in Vegas, like you know. We had a plane they'll go over there as well, so that was good. They are, it's a, 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 you know, a real niche of fans, so it's very lucky to have that support because it's like a family, and you are like a family with fans. And I, I don't know what I, my father used to say to me, you know, uh, you know, Joey, Joseph, you know, without the fans, you're nothing. I went, I took a deep, I said, I know that, Dad, but to keep rubbing it in, I know that, and it's true, it's true. So my fans have, you know, I have uh, friends of Joe as well that help me. Most of the fans help me with functions and things and do the charities, Geraldine, for instance. And of course, Christine takes care of other things. So I've, I've got like a, a wonderful team around me which is supporting me, which I do need, especially at this time now. You know what I mean? It's just a funny old thing. Do you think, though, as well, Joe, you get a lot from the fans, but do you know what they get from you? It's quite amazing that their lives... A lot of them revolve around you and where you're going to be and where you're going to perform. And it works so both ways. It. it works both ways. Like I've always said, when, in one, when I get on that stage and we connect with an audience, there's, a, there's an healing that goes that takes place. I couldn't tell you what it is, but there's definitely a something going on. And, and I love it, that feeling of um, connection. It, it's so important. And they, they, they've been trem- tremendous with me never let me down and um, I owe my life to the fans. Well ladies and gentlemen, good evening. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to say anything. Just that, uh, well so it's been great being with you all. You know it is, you're full of, full of happiness and love. Uh, come up here ladies and gentlemen, it really is, it's truly a wonderful. Uh, well thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, let's, you know, we've got to go through it. In fact, my mate Roy, as you know, went through a, a terrible, he had cancer at the throat box there in Jones, which was a uh, terrible for anyone, you know, and he, he, went, he was suffering for years with it, and now he's back doing his stuff, and so, you know, give me the next one up. It's a fight. Come on, whoa! So, so I hope to see you again sometime, ladies and gentlemen. If not, it's been good. You know, <laughs> Um, but to anyone who was suffering, when anything could be nerves, bad, heart gone the other way, anything, legs. There's always somebody somewhere where soft than yourself, you know, look around in families, you know. You know. And people on their own by themselves, pensioners living by themselves, I can't stand that either. I'm going to join that if I get, if I get through next week. I'm joining UK Edge UK. Hey, I'm on the committee, love. I'm having some bungalows built. But never mind. Fight the unbeatable foe to bear with unbearable sorrow to run where the breeze dare not go. Oh, to rise 
being right up or wrong and to be better off than you are to try when your arms are so weary but you reach the unbeatable star To fight the right To fight Without question of force To be willing to march into hell Like peace from the car. Then, John, because I'm not going to Blackpool, don't be sure the show's not going to go on. So, if you visit Blackpool, then, John, our show is going to be good. It's called That's What Friends Are For. I'm there as a hologram <laughs> or a telegram, as somebody said. So, I'll be there. And what happened is, my friend, then, John, from the West End, and Darren Day is going to look in for me and step in and watch all. You know, that text some doing for anybody. So, so if you're in Blackpool, and you that down that way, give them a shout. And the world could be better for this. The one man, torn and covered in scars, he still stole with his last ounce of courage. you apparently going in hospital and you know my heart's with you you look after yourself man keep your strength up you've proved to us all that you're indestructible 
I mean, you've been ill for a long, long time, and as far as I'm concerned, you're the best, you're the greatest, and everybody I know thinks the world of you. Can't imagine life on this planet without a Joe Longthorn. So what I'm saying to you is, you know, just keep, just, just think, you know, God, I owe everybody money, I'll have to come back. <laughs> you look after yourself, you little tinker. We get things from all over the world, as you know, we, uh, people from as far as Japan sending get world cards. Uh, Ingobert rung me up the other day to wish me all the very best. Uh, I think Alice, is, Alice from Shameless is moving in next door. <laughs> and uh, you now I've had people, you know, everyone from, you know, from Barbara Windsor to to um, Jeffrey Archer ringing me and wishing me the best, you know, and, and, and not just, you know, people of that sort of stature, just people, like today on the pier, you know, people wishing you well, it's, and um, it's, a, it's, it, it's wonderful because you take, have to take that on board, because wishing you well is like a blessing, mm. but I must, I, I tend to be a strong guy, I always have been since I was a kid, I've always been looking forward as it were, you know, I, want, I wanted to be a when I went to school, I wasn't good at school, but yeah, I wanted to be a criminal defence barrister. I, I, humanities was my, not my game at school. I was good at humanities. So when I used to get banned from school, they'd send me to um, senior citizens' homes, which I used to go and play the piano, make the tea, sort the biscuits out, crack a few gags. So I was doing that at a very, that was 14 year old. So I was into that, caring, at an early age. You know, they kicked me out of school to go and do something else. What, what I did was wonderful. He helped me again see people in conditions, you know, at, at times of their lives. So I was look, I was blessed to find that out so so young, you know. So, so I've always been a humanitarian. It's my biggest deal, and uh, you know. But um, I'm looking forward to tonight. We've got a birthday party on tonight for me. And usually I'm not a really birthday guy. You know, my dad one. A lot of a lot of like travelling people out don't do birthdays. But don't, you know, don't <laughs> and uh, so it's wonderful when the fans get together, friends get together, and I'll be seeing quite a few tonight. The people have come up from London and from all over the place for tonight. So on the one, and it's going to be a wonderful birthday, I'm sure. And then, um, and then Monday, I've got to, this Monday, I've got to go back to um, an hospital in Preston to find out the results of what's going on because. As I say, I started to get pains in my neck and my, my, my mouth here, and, and I thought, but you know, you know, I thought, okay, this is something serious. And when I went to see the, my doctor, he said, well, what's been going on in your mouth? It's been going on for quite some time. Whoops. And I just thought it's because I'd bit my mouth. You know, like sometimes you can bite the inside of your mouth. No, it's not. So, uh, so, so we did the X-rays. I went for all the through the washer and the spin dryer and everything, and. And, uh, and um, one or two x-rays came back, you know, good, good for us. But um, the specialist, um, Mr. Dacta, is looking after me now. And uh, he's looking after me. I like, he looks after many people. He's a great guy. He's a young fella, and he's looking after me. And um, I've just got to go to see him on, on Monday because they found a little something in my chest, what they didn't see the first time. So that's as far as I know. But um, as I said, look at that wonderful, you know, Stephen Sutton was a young chap, you know, you know, 18 years old. Mm. At, fancy at that time getting cancer and realising it's terminal. What do I do? Do I go and cry my eyes out? Do I, you know, it's, it's a natural thing to do that. No, Stephen, he's gone, no, I want to do it, I'll make a mark. I want to make, and now I think there's over five or six thousand million pounds in, his, in the kitty. So that's a brave guy. That, that's because it is young and old, you know, we, we have to help everyone in cancer, but there is de definitely a, you know, you get to a certain age and it, 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 so, it, but, but now what he's been able to do with his foundation and others like him have been able to so get things going for young people suffering with cancer. Cause not other think about young people with mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. And when they used to like mix, mix and match, when I was in, in Manchester for instance, there'd be like a lot of youngsters and they'd be a lot of, they're all mixed. And I, I was quite sure that the youngsters felt completely out of place. But now, with these funds that people are raising now, cancer can be treat, treated in an understanding where, when you're young, in the, in the surroundings, rather than sat laid next to an old man like me, they've got they've got their own places, which is so important.
because it's a, di- it's a different deal when, you, when you're when you young and when you get old, you see things differently. So so it's all about being young now and staying alive. So he's really given me a, a big push, mm. especially with this next thing, whatever goes on now. He's uh, he's done really well for me and, uh, and his family must be, you know, what they've had to go through and see, but they must be so proud to think that, um, I'm sure they are, that what, what Stephen's done is, is brought things to attention. It's wonderful. It's, 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 it's a miracle that that happens. So we're looking. That ever happened to me. So I'm David Dickinson's daughter, Cheapest Chips. Um, I've been a massive, massive fan of Joe's for many years from when I was tiny. Um, and this is my first time ever seeing him. I'm so excited. It's like joining a, a, a family. You know, everybody around this table has been lovely. They all ooze Joe Long- Longford. I can't wait to see him and I wish him a happy birthday and fabulous 20 years from now. I just love Longthorn. Longthorn and me will always be mates. We're just buddies. We're just pals and I love it and we don't have any pretentious stuff that goes on and he loves what I do, I adore what he does and we meet in the middle somewhere and do it together. It's fantastic. And what about the news at the moment? Is it will he fight it all the way? Oh I don't do you know, I can honestly say I've not um, I've not even looked on a negative in there. I just will carry on until it, if and, and, and thankfully it probably won't anything happens we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but I don't even look at that you know it's just it's way in the distance for me that Good evening guys um, this is a pleasure to be at Joe's birthday party this evening here at Viva uh, Joe and I go back uh, quite a few years as such we both did the Six for a Star in uh, the early 80s. As we've gathered this week, um, Joe's had one of, the, one of these weeks where it's not been very good for him having the treatment um, as regards the cancer for Joe. Um, but he'll fight it through. The man's like a, a winner. He's got, he's got to do it. He's just a, he's a, he's a winner. He's a, he's a governor in our business. You ask anybody in our business who's the governor, it's Joe Longthorn. No one to touch him. Can you tell us how you feel about uh, doing the summer season at Blackpool for Jan? I'm very excited about doing it. It's very special for me, you know, I mean, it, if I'm honest, you know, uh, I, I've been a fan of Joe since I was a kid. You know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a strange thing really, people say, never meet your heroes, you know. Um, but I did meet my hero and became friends with my hero. And, he, uh, he never disappointed me. You know, I'm very proud to call him a friend. And so this for me was, um, when I was asked to do this, I was incredi- I felt incredibly deeply in it. And I really did. And I never thought I'd feel this way And as far as I'm concerned I'm glad I got the chance to say That I do believe I love you And if I should ever go away Then close your eyes and think of me The way I feel today And then if you can remember Keep smiling, keep shining Knowing you can always count on me For sure In your time Bad time.